more details in our subsequent news bulletin. But back to our main topic of discussion this morning, in line with the current issues of flooding affecting major parts of the country, we're now joined by the managing consultant slash CEO and pioneer DG of the FCT Emergency Management Agency. I'm talking about none other than the delectable and esteemed Dr. Abbas Garba Idris. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you in our studio. It's my pleasure, too. Now, in addressing Nigeria's flawed issues, many were thrown aback about the devastating effects in Meduguri, Borno State. And we've seen the international community rally around Nigerians, more like eminent Nigerians, donating towards a disaster relief fund mm. to help them. Yeah. But uh, beyond this, we would like to look at it on a thematic basis, mm. from prevention to our response and then to relief. Well, yeah. let's get your thoughts much as you sympathize with those in uh, Borno this morning as you make your comments. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I want to once again uh, really sympathize with the people and government of uh, Borno State for that uh, avoidable disaster. It is very unfortunate uh, that such thing happen. And uh, well, I want to link it up with certain things, uh, especially when you are talking about prevention. You see, in disaster management, the whole thing centers on uh, planning and preparation. And uh, you don't look at it and sit down and wait until it happens before you now uh, respond. You, you have to start planning. And, and luckily, uh, disasters give signs. It doesn't just come. It doesn't just occur. Even if it is a tremor, I mean earthquake, it starts from somewhere. So, and, and there should be experts who are really monitoring those things, especially when we are talking of dams. There are experts in dams who are monitoring the, uh, the, the, the nature of the dams. How is it spilling up? How is it really, it, does it require uh, some strategic uh, work? And, and also, uh, that dam, if it is uh, spilled over or it's open, there must be a, a waterway that will pass. And so there should be experts also who are going to really make sure that that line is not blocked. It's just like the NMPC line, that uh, the pipeline, you cannot just go and start building on that uh, pipeline. So it's some experts are really monitoring to ensure that nobody encroach into that. So also the waterways. We, we shouldn't allow people to just come and build over the, the, the waterways and, and so something just come to happen. One thing that stands out for me as you make your comments is avoidable. Yes. Now we're looking at a response, particularly as we reviewed some of the outcomes of the FEC meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. FEC has also set up a technical committee to assess all dams in the country because the situation in Meduguri, the controversy, mm -hmm. many are blaming climate change. Some persons are saying is the allowed dam that had some structural integrity issues. Mm -hmm. But be this the case, what would you expect of this technical committee as set up by FEC? Why are we always setting up committees? Why are we always setting up committees? We had dams. Those dams were, were constructed by experts and it's been supervised by a ministry or a department or a parastatal. So, and those people are there. Are there any experts that are going to be more than those people who have been, who developed the, 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 the dams, and then they are going to, what kind of work are they going to do? If you go to each dam, you will see a settlement, you will see an office, you will see officers working. And each year, there are budgets managing those dams. All we need to do is to follow the templates and then ensure that we have done the right thing. We shouldn't be going front and back because by the time you set up a technical committee, are they going to unseat those people who are resident in that, uh, in that, uh, in that, in that dam? Or are we going to have a new dam? Or we are going to have a new waterways, the, the, the way we are going to. Do you see climate change has come to overtake everything and we have to align ourselves with the climate change. We have to find out what is the impact that the clim climate change is bringing to our economy, to our water uh, uh, system. And then we also send our uh, experts uh, uh, for training, train them and then let them come and manage our dams. But if we continue to review we will continue after this government, another government will come and set up a committee. We had a series of flawed committees. Where is the outcome?
Now the, 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 the Flood Relief Committee has been set up a long time ago, if you remember, under uh, the, um, uh, uh, the multi billionaire Dangote during the first 2012 flooding. What is the outcome of that committee? What have they achieved? What is the result? What are we going? What are we heading? Is there any report? Where did we? Where are we going? And where did we lack certain things? Then we improve upon. But if we go back, having done this, and come back and start all over, we will still remain at the same point, and then we are going to be cut off by the same flood. Black, you, I don't belong to a school of thought that believe that uh, flood is a disaster. I don't believe in that. Flood is a is a is a is a risk, and and and, and, and so it's a hazard, and therefore it can be managed. And if we want to, if you like, go and build your house on a flood plain, and say flood will not come and 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 take over the house. So, but if you build your house at an upper at an upper land, you have take we have already taken a precaution. And th if this is a waterway and you didn't allow the water to come and pass and you build a house it. Uh, and then and then when the water comes you say you have been overtaken by disaster what is the disaster there you are the disaster because already this is a waterway and you came and built on it so we can be able to prevent it it's not every water in fact some people are looking for this water we can arrest this water and make it a tourism attractive attraction and earn money to it. Some countries are looking for it. Go to Israel. Have you ever heard that today they stop war because of rainfall? They don't have rain. If you have ever been to Israel, your, your pee is fee. When you pee, it goes somewhere. And they use it for, for whatever. And today, if we are looking for expert in agriculture, we look at Israelites to come and build for us. They don't have water. So what we need to do is to look at, go back to the drawing board and look at those things that we're supposed to do, improve upon it. And the only thing, again, what to do away with corruption and ensure transparency in all what we are doing. Otherwise, you can see, go and check the budgets of all the ministries responsible for, for, for flood and whatever. You see that. Every year there are money for dams management, there are money for flood plains areas, there are money for waterways, there are money. What happened last year, we had flood in, 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 on those uh, local Ab Abuja road, that we had how many days without traffic. And yet, what has happened? Is that, that does anybody give a report that this is an improvement we have done? If today we had such kind of what, uh, flood, it's going to be okay. We'll have uh, uh, trailers coming to the uh, to the north or coming to, to Abuja to 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 dispatch uh, for it. So we are always at one point, and then we continue to do. So we have to do away with uh, corruption and ensure transparency in all we are doing, and people should be accountable. Now talking about accountability, also listening to comments made by the governor Baba Gana Zulu, he lamented this neglect. He said that there had been reports over nine years ago about some of the issues affecting the Alao Dam. Now, in preferring solutions from the angle of ensuring regulation, even from a point of structural integrity and buildings around these high-risk areas, like you say, mm -hmm. uh, who would you feel is more saddled with this responsibility? People talk about uh, the federal government being overburdened when states are not taking the initiative to ex ensure that emergency response agencies within states collaborate at the federal level and at the state level to ensure due enforcement? You see, it involves everybody. As far as I'm concerned, it's a joint effort. Uh, federal government can set up uh, an establishment, and then the state government can also contribute. And the people, most especially the people, because those people that are affected by this flood, were they trained? Were they even told in case of anything, this is what you can do? It is the responsibility, our own responsibility, I can say, to train the people living along the riverside as well as those floodplain areas and the waterways. You have to train them. And I always advocate for, uh, for a localized way of doing things. If you go to river Rhine areas, you see a small boy going to primary school by canoe. He knows how to use canoe from this point to the 
at that point to go to primary school and when he comes back he can also do that you can never have such in the north except those who are fishermen isn't it and so if you have such people train them give them modern equipment you know and then tell them that in case of this this is how you carry out rescue you can rescue your papa you can rescue other people look at what was happening in Medugui. nobody can even use canoe common canoe nobody can use it so and even among the experts that we said they were the responders we cannot even use canoe. do we even have the canoe we don't so these are the things that we need to we need to incorporate whatever that we come along we discover that this is a local and and it can be trained it can be changed we use it we don't have to import something from abroad but those people that are really working and living along the waterways we train them we show them how to understand early warnings that's first thing let them understand that once you see the level of water reaching to this level at this dam then you evacuate because it will get to a place that the dam will explode so if they see that they will have to leave start leaving before it gets to the red line so if you teach them that they will now alert those people and those living on the area they cannot evacuate the issue of evacuation in this country is neglected we don't ne we don't evacuate and even japan this week has has served a notice because they noticed there was going to be flood and they they issue a notice that uh, people should evacuate and neatly they evacuate and luckily if you go to japan they have evacuation centers so you can see an old woman trekking to evacuation centers before the earthquake or before uh, a flood. So now, now talking about this evacuation center, sorry to cut you, doctor. Yes. It's a big challenge because yesterday and today mm. we saw another evacuation order mm. as issued by the federal government. Mm. And they said it is as a result of the river Benway that has risen to yes. 0 0.9 to meters. Yes. Now people are asking... <laughs> Where? where did this person relocate to? That is the issue. If we had adequate planning, we will have, as we are building dams, we will now build evacuation centers. centers. Because we are sure that the, this dams is going to spill over. So if we have that plan, that is why I told you, in disaster management, preparation, early warning is key. So we have to do that. We will have done that as we are building dams. We are building dams and people are living around that area or they will come for fishery. So we have to really plan for them. If it gets to a level, where are they going? So you just boom, give them a notice and then they will all move to the, 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 the upper area. But we don't. You go, to, you go to a place that is very dangerous but no evacuation center. And the evacuation centers are well equipped in developed countries. Whatever trade you do, you will continue to do it in that at the center. So you, it is not going to be bored for you. You can stay there up to one week, two weeks. Now, even the, 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 the open land that people came to take shelter have been chased away, going back to uh, uh, where the flood was ravaged. And then the integrity of the building, most of the buildings in Merugri are mold block. And then it was overtaken by water. And now you ask people to go back to that house. They will not be having collapse building and then also the, the, the outbreak of diseases. Because we need to settle these people at least for two weeks. If there is adequate planning, we will have all planned for this. That, okay, we will do this. And we'll set, some people will have to build them a house a home for themselves because they can't be able to go back to their where they were coming from. So these are all planning in disaster management. And we need to take them sub, uh, 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 sequentially, uh, I mean, uh, subsequently to, to make sure that everybody is treated well. Now, uh, and, and okay, coming to, 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 to issues of um, even uh, uh, intervention, have we taken how much losses have we incurred in Medugri? Can anybody tell us? Financial, financial lives lost, lives businesses lost. crumbled. Yes. Livelihood. Who can tell us? Who can give us figures now that this is the losses incurred as a result of the flood in Medugri? Now we have set up a committee to go and share whatever that is there. How are you going to share it? If you go to a household, 
if you go to a compound, you go to a compound, you can have 10 households and 10 times 20 maybe. Somebody in terms is having families, in terms of the family. Have in terms of the family. Children. Are you going to just take the entrance of the house as a point? So we need to carry out adequate assessment to know the losses that we incurred. And then to see so there are certain losses that the government, the state government cannot be able to take, even the federal government cannot be able to take. Then we now I mean, yell out and ask for, for, for support from the foreign uh, countries. They will come and help us. There are NGOs are, who are looking for giving out shelter. There are NGOs who are looking out for giving livelihoods. So these are the people, these are the kinds of uh, uh, contact that we're supposed to do. But we must have our statistics. Now, some of the statistics that have come to bear, we'll, we'll look at them as they are provided for. Uh, NEMA provided certain statistics. The death toll as of last week was 30 persons. We're told that over 400 persons were displaced. But the challenge was that only nine IDP camps were on ground as at the time of that report. We're seeing foreign NGOs, United Nations come in. Some monies have been donated. The vice president was there. The president, upon arrival, also visited there. But like you're asking... The challenge is with being able to get an accountable figure as to how much has been donated and also to be able to evaluate and monitor its disbursements. Even, even, even the death figures and the people affected, can we rely on life figures? What are the sources? What are the sources? What, we look at the response. How many, how many agencies carried out the response? And were there, were there any collaborative report that shows those figures. Because before you give figures, there must be a reliable source for that figure. And, and that can be used by anybody. If you are now telling us that only 40 or 30 died in Medugri, go and ask the people of Baruno. Go and ask them. If they can tell you Who whether they are 400 or, or even it's less than 30. Let them, let them say it. So the issue is that we shouldn't be we shouldn't be uh, playing politics with such things because it's going to help us in developing our future uh, uh, events. Because if we if we said uh, only forty people died, maybe thirty nine people died, then we lied on one. If we say it's thirty nine, meanwhile it's forty one, we also lied. So we need to critically take assessment, like I said. We have to take assessment, and the, the assessment is going to be joint because there are different stakeholders who are involved that are going to do everything. If I take, I tell you now, any figure, any index matrix figure that you can give on IDPs, if it didn't come from IOM, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. So also, you have agencies that are responsible in other sectors also who are looking for that figures critically. It's just like an election. Somebody will come and tell you that he does not agree. You can see what is happening in Edo. Uh, observer is saying this. The another observer is saying that because they have diff look at it from different angles. So there is need for them to harmonize their own reports and then agree on whatever they have so that the world will accept it. And especially at this period of hunger that is going on in, in, in U.S., United Nations. So this is the time that we we'll carry our report. Whatever we have, genuinely, we now present it. Even if it is a sideline, we now present it that we are ravaged by a disaster and this is how it happened and it has affected this. And we are looking, projecting in the nearest future, this is going to happen. It's going to affect our people economically. In fact, the area has been affected badly for consequently, I mean, uh, uh, for, for so many years, yeah, from uh, Boko Haram, fire uh, uh, incidences, now flood, so so many things. Then we, need, we know how to look at the future. What is going to be the future of Borno if we allow to go like this? So now we need to look at the structure of this whole, the entire state, and then also look at the dam, and then also be able to uh, I mean, make sure that um, there is a, a very constructive way of channeling water out of uh, Meduguri. 30 years ago, it happened, and it was neglected. Nothing happened. Now, this becomes a perennial issue. I'm planning for next year. A lot of persons continue to fault 
the lack of a national census. Mm -hmm. Now, you've talked about collaboration in this regard. What do you think the office of the minister can do in this regard in terms of national planning and budgets going into the next year ahead of the wet seasons again? Are you saying that the national census is a factor? I don't think so, because all the state governors are having their census because they know the people living. They know the settlement they are, they are, they are, they are working with. What, what of those agencies that are supposed to do certain things before people move in? If you have a layout, what do you have to do in the layout before you, 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 you settle people? You have to make sure that all the infrastructures are there. It's like Abuja, you can't go and start building without infrastructure. It's only some few years back that we realized that uh, lands were given out to people without uh, uh, infra engineering infrastructure in Abuja, and we face the consequences, like Lokogoma. Lokogoma, there is no engineering infrastructure, and that was why they suffered a lot of floods. So you have to put the engineering infrastructure and then make sure that anybody coming to, to build also got approved building plan, and then it's going to be supervised by the same agency to ensure that you didn't yeah, you, you didn't temper with the with approval. Now, you have to allow certain uh, openings in your house, within your house, for water to percolate. You don't allow, you don't just put cement everywhere so that water can run out. And that is why, even in Abuja, we are having some flood in some areas because of violations of, of, the, of the planning uh, concept. So, the, the state governors, before they, they, if they notice that people are settling somewhere, they have to go and look, look, stop them, bring the planning uh, uh, authority, let them come and plan, put the layer out, put the drainages, and then give adequate planning, I mean, a building plan to everybody approval before. So if anybody build, that is one thing that the governors must courageously take. They should go and remove any building that is built on the waterways. Now, Doctor, in closing, we have less than two more minutes. My last question, which has been a concern of many viewers and Nigerians on the part of state governments and their involvement is the provision of the ecological fund that also still has some discrepancies about how it's used, how it's accessed by these communities that are most affected by flood. What's your call on that as we close? And each state is enjoying, is benefiting from ecological funds. And everybody knows the, the, the definition of ecological funds. But does it go through that channel? Throughout my stay, 10 years as DG, I've never used ecological funds. I don't know how it is used, whether it comes or not. I have never, I've never used but ecological funds. That's very funds. alarming to hear. In 10 years as DG. 10 years as DG, I have never known how ecological funds is being used. Nobody has given me ecological funds. So it's, it is, but it's been given every month to each state and the FCT. That is the fact. So, and that is the reason why there are certain things that the federal government should really sit down and take some drastic solution. Like the way they took action on the local government autonomy, financial autonomy. That is the things. We don't need uh, new laws. We have all the regulations. We have all the laws. All we need to do is sit down and look at it critically and enforce it. Enforcement is the key. Even if it means going to the court. Go there. Let's make sure that if there is ecological fund, is it for what? Let it be defined and be used. And then there should be report. If you don't give report, next month you will not get it. Simple. I am the custodian of that fund, and I give you for you to work for the people. If you don't give feedback to me, give me your report for the last uh, outing as a reporter. If you don't give, give me, I can assign you to go for another, another assignment. Report. So that is all. If we can strictly stay on that that is mean that means we are fighting the corruption and we're ensuring transparency well i must thank you doctor for your time on the program i'm afraid this is as much as we can accommodate in this very interesting uh, revelation that you have made this morning we're hoping that the uh respective agencies saddled with this will take a cue from some of the advisories you have issued thank you very much for having me i'm glad now, Dr. Abbas Garba Idris, pioneer CEO and DG of the FCT Emergency Response Agency, has highlighted some shocking revelations and has urged the federal government to look into the issues of ecological funds, citing in that in over a decade as DG, some of the disbursements owing to ecological funds have remained quite a dumbfounding 
issue for him. Well, this is available for you to rewatch on our YouTube channel and subsequently on our news bulletins where more insights will be given to Nigeria's steps in addressing the perennial flawed situation from the angle of prevention, response and relief.